Greetings, Villains of Delanis, Heroes and Heroines. You're tuned in to Project Supervillain. I'm your host, Arc Drifter, and today I'm going through another top five. And guess what? May, May's coming up. It, May is, like, tomorrow. I, I don't know. Uh, anyways, we're going to be going through the top five games of May, so just sit back and relax, and let's just jump into it. Number five, Sniper Elite 5. How fitting for Sniper Elite 5 to be the number 5th pick. It's coming out on the PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, and it'll be out on May 26th. So this game's going to be developed and published by Rebellion. So I guess just to hop into this right away, uh, this game is a sniping game, if you haven't figured it out by the title. So this game's going to be offering a lot for uh, players that are a fan of the series. It's going to offer a campaign mode and multiplayer modes as well. Uh, we're going to get into those a little bit more because there's a couple different versions of multiplayer in this. Um, but for the main campaign, you're going to be seeing the return of Carl Fairburn. Uh, and he's going to be... It's classic World War II era warfare as well. And it, I guess in this game, you're kind of investigating a secret Nazi project. Uh, etc. There's, it's it's really about the gameplay in these kinds of games, but there's there's a good story in there to be had as well. So check that out if you're interested. But uh, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this game. Well, essentially, it's got uh, the most intricate sniping system of any game out there. Whenever you shoot your gun, you're gonna have to deal with wind direction, drop off distance, uh, your heart rates, just random environmental interference. There's plenty of things that'll go into taking this shot. It's very real. Realistic. So it's got this whole like aspect of gameplay where it's uh, planning and articulate gameplay is definitely going to be more rewarded uh, in the like original mode of the game. But there are difficulty options if you want to make it easier for yourself. Uh, there's other uh, weapons to be used. So if you want to go in and guns blazing, there are actually ways to go about doing that. But this game does definitely. Uh, recommend you go through it in a stealthy fashion, uh, but there are definitely different routes and strategies to take that create replay value for this game as well. This game also offers two-player co-op support. I really like that. It's online only, no, no uh, split screen or anything like that, but you can go through all the missions with a friend, so that's pretty fun. Uh, th this game features sliding, uh, platforming, you can shimmy on ledges and stuff. I'm not sure if that was part of the game before, but uh, I feel like it's gotten more uh, intricate and in-depth. Uh, as they've come along throughout the years. This game offers in-depth weapon customization as well. Uh, you gotta like find workbenches to, to, to access that essentially. You can customize pretty well every aspect of the gun. Uh, and like I said, like when it comes down to shooting and stuff, all these things are gonna take parts in the actual firing of the weapon and landing shots. So I think that's a really cool and uh, unique part of this game. Uh, it definitely separates it from other shooting games for sure. Uh, it does feature different ammo types and stuff you can kind of unlock and, and, and so it kind of goes into the weapon customization as well. Mm. So kind of getting into the multiplayer bit of this game, there's some pretty cool aspects of it. One of the first things we'll get into is still tied into the campaign and that's the invasion mechanics that are offered in this game. So even if you're in a co-op game, you can be invaded by an opposing player, just one. Uh, and these, these players have an option to go against... Uh, when they, they choose to invade, they can choose to invade a, a single person playing, or they can choose to invade two people, uh, in which they will get more rewards and whatnot if they succeed in their operation. Uh, that's a really cool aspect of the game, but that's just one part of the multiplayer. The other part is the PvP, which is pretty juicy in and of itself. It features a different kind of gameplay too, like it's not just your typical team deathmatch. This is actually four teams of four. Uh, I believe it's a de deathmatch, but there might be other game types. I, I didn't see too much in-depth uh, talk about the multiplayer, but um, definitely look into that. I know there's customizability in the game, so there's definitely lots of options that can be taken there. I imagine there'll be a preset list of game modes to choose from. And on top of the, just the straight-up PvP, there's also PvE. You can group up with two other friends, so three-player, uh, and it's a co-op versus AI. So there's uh, like a survival mode as well there, too. That's just lots of content in this game altogether. Uh, and the last, last few things I'll get into here include the five different classes that are included in the game. There's a sniper, which is kind of your main default class, and then these other classes, I guess, are more like subclasses or side classes. Uh, you can be a scout, a medic, an engineer, or an assault uh, class. So I think uh, each of these classes have different uh, unique skills and equipment that can be used. Um, that's about the extent I know about that. But of course, the last thing I want to talk about for sure 
uh, is this game features, of course, the X-Ray kill cams. It's mainly known for that. It's kind of a signature thing. Uh, very Mortal Kombat-esque, but in this game, they've upgraded it. It's going to be way more gruesome. Uh, like things like you'll see the bullet ricocheting off bones and stuff like that and uh, it, it's just it's it's way more in depth than it used to be in every way this game uh, and last oh, last thing the uh, game also offers cross platform uh, but there's no details on cross progression and whatnot so I'm not sure how that's going to work but that being said let's move on to the next one number four salt and sacrifice salt and sacrifice comes out on PC and PS4 as well as PS5 on May 10th it's developed by Ska Studios and Devoured Studios and published by Ska Studios. So, this game is a side-scrolling adventure RPG. It looks like I haven't actually played the first one, which was Salt and Sanctuary, uh, but it's going to be taking place after that, I guess, in uh, for the story mode stuff. Um, this game also features co-op and PvP as well. Looking into this a little bit further, uh, there's eight different classes with different races, gear, origins, and abilities. There's like mobility options for getting around the map as well, featuring, I believe they said a grappling hook. I didn't see it in action, but uh, there's definitely good ways to get around the map a lot easier than just walking around. Uh, this game kind of reminds me in a way, like kind of like Hollow Knight, kind of. I'm not sure if it's going to be as good as that game, because that game is... Uh, chef's kiss but we'll have to wait and see there's deep labyrinths with lots to explore just giant bosses that are going to take kick the shit out of you so watch out uh you got crafting and upgrading and stuff in this game as well there's a level up and skill tree so th there's lots you can do in this game and uh, like i said there's eight different classes so there's plenty of options on how to play this game uh that's definitely going to encourage replayability and whatnot in this game as well so you're, you're gonna find yourself coming back to it a lot if it's a actually a lot of fun so the items here are apparently useful unique they're purposeful there's a wide variety of them for both boosting your stats uh uh, so it's so a buffing, uh, debuffing, that kind of stuff. Just general potions that you'll find in any other RPG and plenty of others. So just like Sniper Elite 5, there's actually a player invasion mechanic in this game as well. Um, so like I said before, there's co-op and PvP. So you can actually be hanging out with a friend and get attacked on your way if someone joins in. Um, or yeah, it's pretty interesting how that will work. Uh, that being said, that's all I really have uh, for information on Salt and Sacrifice. If you're interested, definitely go check out more trailers and stuff about this game. Uh, but like I said, it will be out on May 10th, so look into it. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Number 3, Vampire the Masquerade, Swan Song. So, coming out on the PC, PS4, 5, Xbox One, Series S and X, and apparently the Nintendo Switch too, uh, we're going to be seeing Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song. Also, this will be out on May 19th. It's developed by Big Bad Wolf Studio and published by Nacon. Uh, so, this is kind of a classic style RPG game, uh, a computer RPG to be more specific on kind of the subgenre. It's just got a lot of like classic RPG mechanics in it you'll notice um, so so when you're going into this game you're gonna see like it's not like an open world game in this case I think these games usually are but this one's gonna have hub based worlds so uh, it, I guess that's a bit of a stray away from the previous games which I think that's okay uh, it's a third person game if you haven't been able to figure that out just by the look of it there but it's uh, contrary to what you might think I actually didn't know much about this game before looking into it I thought maybe there'd be combat in this game this is not one of those kind of games this is a detective game uh vampire sherlock holmes minus the combat actually because sherlock holmes can fight but uh that being said the vampire mechanic is definitely not lost in the game we'll get into that a little bit more in a second here but let's just get into the kind of the gameplay and how this works there's a leveling up and an ability skill tree there's lots of different abilities that you can choose to to use uh you are a vampire so you're going to be getting all sorts of stuff that you can use to, to interrogate people, to uh, find clues. So, so like I said, you're a detective. It's, it's not about fighting things as much as it's about persuading people, finding clues, and working through problems to get through situations. So like I said, no combat, but like you are going to need to feast. You are a vampire. It's kind of part of the, uh, the thing. And you have a hunger gauge, so you've got to satiate yourself in some way. You'll need to feed on people at some point. I guess uh, the way that works is you kind of got to isolate people when they're alone and uh, then you get the option to feed on them depending on uh, who they are or what situation you're in. I'm not sure if you're just allowed to eat anybody in the game or not, but 
Uh, people that are familiar with this game might be able to tell you a little bit more. This game does look pretty cool despite all that. So if you're looking for something a little bit more on the chill side and a little bit less like reactionary and stuff like that, then you, this might be a game you'd be interested in because there's lots of... It's, it's got a deep, deep lore. There's lots going on and this series has been around for a while, but I imagine you could get into this game as your first one and still kind of figure out what's going on because there's just so much explanation going on in this game. There's so much dialogue and talking that you will probably no doubt figure out what's happening pretty quickly. So not only will you be able to use your vampire skills to uh, like figure out puzzles and stuff, but it'll actually help you traverse the locations and stuff like that. So you, I believe there's like teleporting and, and other crazy things that vampires can do. Uh, depending on which path you take because there's different paths you can take for the upgrading and stuff like that. But anyways, that's really all I know about this game. Uh, it looked pretty cool. It's a different kind of game. Uh, not for everybody I'd imagine, but definitely some people might be interested in this one. Uh, that being said, these next few games here, uh, specifically the next two, the honorable mention doesn't count, but the next two uh, are games that I'm actually really looking forward to. These ones back here were kind of all equal to me. They look cool, but they're not really something I think I'm going to put too much time into trying to get my hands on or anything like that. So anyways, let's move on into the meat and potatoes of this video, I consider anyway. Number 2, Evil Dead, the game. The game! Did you guys think we were going to be talking about the movies, or the shows, or any of the other things? No, we're talking about the game, obviously. But, I digress. It's coming out on the PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series S, Series X, and the Nintendo Switch on May 13th. This game is developed by Saber Interactive, as well as published by them and Boss Team Games. So, it's uh, Bruce Campbell, dude. They're, he's coming back. Of course, you can't be too surprised. He's, I think he's in every Evil Dead thing out there. Uh, he loves being in this stuff from what I understand, so I'm sure he's happy to be back. And I'm sure fans of the series are happy to see him return as well. So this game's kind of a four-player Dead by Daylight game. Um, kind of a little mixture of Left 4 Dead style in there. Definitely mostly Dead by Daylight uh, inspired, kind of the Friday the 13th inspired gameplay. Where you've got four survivors and one like super soldier enemy. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more here as I explain. But yes, so you've got a co-op aspect here as well as a PvP aspect. There's a single player mode as well for those that just want to play the story and kind of get, take that in. Uh, there's a story mode with missions. Yeah. So you're supposed to be finding key artifacts and sealing breaches, uh, like demon breaches, I guess. I'm not a big uh, Evil Dead guy, so if I, forgive me if I sound like a little ignorant in this game. So getting into kind of the actual multiplayer gameplay, there's uh, so the person playing as the demon has a choice of nine different playable demons to choose from. There's a uh, each demon can do different things, like summon other demons that try to kill the humans. Uh, there's there's plenty of other things that these can, guys can do uh, depending on which one you choose. So there's nine different ones. Have fun. Uh, this game features looting, crafting, uh, and, and those are kind of like the core parts of the loop that keep you coming back. Um, you're going to constantly be getting stuff like that to make your, your gear better and make your next run more fun. Uh, and then you'll be upgrading your guy as well like that. So you get different abilities and stuff. There's progression on each of them. Uh, there's a leader, there's a warrior, there's a hunter in the support class. Like I said, different abilities. They all do different things. Uh, and yeah, there's like uh, 25 different weapons to use as well. This game's got a lot to offer. It also features an overarching progression system, much like a lot of other games in a similar vein. Uh, and like I said, for each of the characters, there's going to be different upgrades and skills. So just something to look into uh, if you are a fan of... Uh, Something to look into if you're a fan of Dead by Daylight or Friday the 13th, this has definitely got those vibes. Uh, even if you're a Left 4 Dead or Back for Blood kind of person, you might enjoy this as well. Uh, it's just third person instead of first, so I'm sure you'll get used to it. But it's uh, looking pretty cool. I, I definitely like to look at this one. We might be checking it out because it's on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, but yeah, that being said, that's it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Oh yeah, it's time for our honorable mention, Pac-Man Museum Plus. Oh god, so uh, I keep hearing the ad for this one because uh, at work I, I constantly am surrounded by the sounds of video game trailers. I work at a game store. Uh, Pac-Man Museum Plus is one that's constantly playing and the dude that's doing the ad for this, if, if I, you guys could hear the audio, he is absolutely yelling this man. Like it's, it sounds it's kind of like Patton Oswalt if he was screaming all the time. Uh, but anyways, he's super amped for Pac-Man Museum Plus and so am I. 
No, not really. I'm, I'm not a big Pac-Man Pac guy, but I imagine there's people out there that are. Uh, Pac-Man Museum Plus is coming out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch May 27th. So we're kind of getting like previous gen release here, but that being said, I'm sure it'll work on the new gen stuff. It's just not going to have that extra fidelity. Look, it's Pac-Man. I'm not sure you're looking for that anyway. It's definitely more just get this game and play it. I'm sure you're well aware it's developed and published by Bandai Namco. Um, and what we're looking at here is 14 different Pac-Man titles, um, all crammed into one game, essentially. So each of these different Pac-Man titles offers a different kind of gameplay, obviously. Um, so the overarching thing here is you're going to be unlocking missions and collecting coins each time you uh, play some of the Pac-Man games and, and do well in them. You unlock more stuff. Uh, I guess you gotta beat your score, you beat the prerequisite scores and whatnot, and you get more stuff that way. There's a plenty of unlockables in this game, and the unlockables are used to customize your, like, custom arcade that, uh, Pac-Man just chills in there, you can see him there, but, uh, yeah, so you're just kind of getting all these things, but the main draw is that you have all these Pac-Man titles in one spot. It's, uh, so some of these have up to four players, if you weren't aware, um, so certain of, not, not all of them, but some of these games offer up to four players, uh, and I guess the other thing is, too, like, you can share your arcade with your friends online, uh, or not even just with your friends, but just, there's an online, it's got, it's called the Museum Plus, you can share, show off your arcade there, but, uh, I don't have much more information for that, it's a pretty straightforward remaster there, uh, 14 Pac-Man titles, if you're into Pac-Man, this is a dream come true for you, I'm sure. Yeah, that's that's it all. It's all I got really to talk about for Pac-Man. Let's move on to the next one. Number one, Trek to Yomi. Okay, this one actually looks really cool. Uh, it's coming on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series S, and X, and it'll be out May 5th. This one's coming to Game Pass as well, so I'm, we're definitely going to be checking this one out. But if uh, you're a fan of Ghost of Tsushima stuff, this is definitely something you're going to want to look out for. It's developed by Flying Wild Hog and published by Devolver Digital. So I have a lot of faith in this one being good. Uh, that being said, they are being fairly open about it. It's apparently a pretty short game. So I'm not expecting it to be too long. I think it's supposed to be like five hours roughly. But uh, what we're looking at here, you can see it right there. It's got this black and white style. Uh, it's got a fixed camera angle most of the time in this game, kind of a, uh, but there's kind of certain parts that are kind of just regular third person almost. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely, I'd classify this as like a 3D side scroller. It's got Japanese dialogue throughout uh, with English subs, so if you're not into reading, you might not be into this game. Um, it's, you're gonna have to like do a lot of that. It's, uh, it's set in like classic Japan, so um, as you can see there anyway. Uh, the regular mode is apparently fairly difficult in this game too, so it's not going to be like the easiest game ever, but there are difficulty options if you do want to just have a more narrative focused experience, that's an option, and if you want to have a, like a one hit kill experience, that's also a mode in this game as well, so uh, lots, to, lots to do there, um, but like I said, it's only a 5 hour experience, so it's not going to be an insanely uh, long one, but I think they're going for more impact than than. It definitely quality over quantity is their goal here. Uh, so block and parry is definitely your main game in this. You can kind of see that. Uh, obviously, you can attack. There's different uh, abilities and, and combos you can do. But blocking and parrying are going to be very helpful for you in this game. Like I was saying, it's kind of on the more difficult side of things. So you're going to want to be blocking and parrying and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's got new weapons you can unlock later on too. So you're not just rocking a sword the whole time. Uh, plenty of new attacks that you'll learn over time and one unique thing about this game that I kind of think is pretty cool is that the save points are in form of shrines in this game and they can only be used once per playthrough each shrine that you find can only be used one time so kind of a weird niche thing but you never know when you, you, you I, I feel like there's plenty of times people have used the save point twice um, you're not able to do that in this game. You've got you got to be a little bit more decisive on when you save and stuff like that. So that's pretty interesting to me. One last thing to talk about with this game is it offers plenty of collectibles and unlockables, and it also has four unique endings. So in that five-hour experience, you're looking at a couple more hours than that because I imagine you're going to be able to play it a couple more times and get those other endings and and experience it. It does seem like a really fun game, and you bet your ass we're going to be checking it out over on our Twitch page. Uh, make sure you're following us there. It's twitch.tv slash Project Supervillain. Uh, but that's it for this top five. 
If you want to support this video, if you want to support our channel, we really appreciate it first of all, but second of all, the way to do that is by hitting the subscribe button. But that's going to be it for today's video, so if you want to support the channel, if you like what we're trying to do here, make sure you hook us up with a subscription, we appreciate that. It's free, you know, you can do that, you don't have to pay any money. Check us out Thursdays and Fridays for streams, uh, we'll be playing some of these games on this list here for sure, but we do lots of other content in our description down below. Check out all of our other links, you'll see all the other content we do. Uh, we don't just do top fives every month. We've got plenty of other stuff going on and we appreciate any and all support. But that being said, that's it for today's video. So thanks for joining. Thanks for watching and project dismissed. Peach out.